Okay, welcome back, Chemistry 111 guys. We've got another uh, homework answer key here on YouTube, and I hope it helps you kind of think through how you solve these problems and gives you really good examples of what I'm looking for when I'm going to be grading uh, these types of problems and these kinds of calculations on an exam, which is coming up in about a week and a half. So let's go ahead and dive right in. This first one deals with the idea of isotopes, right? And so you've got what? You've got hydrogen, which is just really uh, normal hydrogen with uh, uh, one proton, right? And then you've got deuterium, right? Deuterium, if you look it up, and again, you know, this is open book, open notes, so you could have used your book or the internet or whatever. Um, oops, camera kind of, or pin kind of slid there. Sorry about that. Um, you've got this idea of deuterium, right? Well, deuterium is just hydrogen, but now it's got a proton and a neutron, so now the mass number has gone up. And then finally, you have tritium, which is the uh, addition of a single. Uh, an additional uh, neutron and so you have H1, 2, and 3. How do they differ? Well they're all hydrogen, right? And so if they're all hydrogen they have the same number of what? The same number of protons, right? Because protons uh, dictate the elemental identity, right? And so you have protons equals 1 for all of these, right? The way they differ is the number of neutrons and that's really important, right? Neutrons have no charge because they're neutral, remember that, and in this case it could be equal to 0, 1, or 2 depending on which isotope you have. So hydrogen 1 is just normal typical hydrogen, hydrogen 2 is deuterium, and hydrogen 3 is known as tritium. And we'll talk more about these later when we get into nuclear chemistry, but for right now, based on what we talked about in class, we're talking about what does that nucleus look like and the number of particles in that nucleus is really important. So that's what this question deals with. So specifically, um, they differ in the number of neutrons, 0, 1, and 2, and specifically they are similar or have in common uh, a single proton in every case. There we go. All right, so if we now dig into a little bit more of a calculation-based question, we can see here we've got a naturally occurring isotope of copper. Um, you've got a mixture of, it looks like, two different isotopes here. You've got copper 63, about 69% abundant, and then you've got copper 65, that's about 31% abundant, and it's going to ask you to actually go ahead and determine uh, the average atomic mass of copper and show your calculation sig figs and units. It's really important to remember all three of those. And so here we're going to essentially calculate a weighted average, right? Because a weighted average takes into account the uh, percentage of each quantity, right? Whereas a normal average, you just take the average and you don't worry about weighting them. In this case, you weight them based on the percent. And let's go ahead and jump right in and see how we do that. And so we're going to say we're going to get the, uh, the average um, atomic mass, right? And the equation is what? It's going to be equal to the um, the mass of isotope number one, right? Times what? Times its uh, percent abundance, right? Plus uh, the mass of isotope number two, right? Times its abundance as well and so on and so forth depending on how many you have. Now fortunately here we only have two so this is really easy so let's go ahead and crank this out so average atomic mass is going to be equal to I'm going to go ahead and pick the first isotope that copper 63 I'm going to say it's 62.9298 and don't forget to put your units this is going to be atomic mass units AMU is really important also just when you're on an exam or something please confirm that you actually translated the number correctly when you write it down in your problem because a typo it's not going to cost you big points but you want to be careful to do your best okay and the percentage here the abundance is 69.09 percent and we're going to write that as a fraction right instead of uh, a, out of a hundred we're going to make it out of a out of, out of just a single one right and so instead of a hundred I'm going to say one so we divide it by hundred so that ends up being 0 0.6909 and that's essentially a, a fraction of the whole, if, if this whole thing, right, if this whole thing's gonna equal 100, we divide 100 by 100, you get one, you take a percent, you divide it by 100, and you get these fractions that are gonna add up to one, which is um, what we want, right? We need to have the entire amount added up. And so we're gonna go ahead and add this to our second isotope, which is gonna be the copper 65. It's gonna be 64.9278 AMU. And the abundance there is going to be uh, 30.91 divided by 100, which is 0 
uh, 3091 and that's going to be our answer so you crank this out now here you want to you know be careful because we just spent a lot of time talking about significant figures right so in this case you you got to think about what are what are the answers going to be to these two right we have two multiplication steps before we have an addition step and so here you have this number that has it looks like six sig figs times a number that only has four so this is going to be four sig figs and so that's going to be really important and then the same thing here so you got to think about this when we do these different calculations to kind of figure out what is your end result going to be in correct number of sig figs and when you crank this out i get something along the order of 63.55 amu and that's my final answer i'm going to make sure i've got my correct number of sig figs and my correct units and, and there you go and if you're still having a hard time understanding some of this, make sure to come talk to me uh, either via Discord or uh, after class, and we'll try to get you squared away because, you know, again, that exam's coming up. Now, this next question kind of takes the same formula, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and give you the average atomic mass here, and instead I'm going to make you go and calculate an unknown that happens to be one of the masses of the individual isotopes. And so this is really the same thing. It's just that your unknown is going to be something different than it was before. And so we can crank this out, right? I'm not. I'm using the same formula as number two, so I'm not going to write the formula down. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the numbers. So I'm going to take my average atomic mass, which is 39.948. And let's please remember these are AMUs, right? The units up here were given to you. That's really important. And that's going to be equal to the mass of isotope number one, which is 35.96755. That's a lot of sig figs there, AMU, times the abundance. And you remember, this is the percent. So you need to take the percent and divide it by 100. So 0 0.03. Oh, it's going to be what? Nope, nope. I see I almost made a mistake there. So remember, divide by 100, that's two decimal places. 0 .00, uh, let me make this a little bit clearer. That looks like a five, sorry about that. Easy enough, 0, 0, 003370, there we go. And I'm gonna add that to the second isotope, which is 37.96272. Don't forget those units that you're gonna lose points if you don't write units. And then divide that by 100, and I get 0 0.000630. Uh, interesting to note here, looks like our abundance is going to be kind of a pain in the butt because it only has three sig figs, so we got to keep a track of that. And then finally, the last one, we don't know the mass of this isotope. That's what we're going to be solving for. So I'm just going to call that good old X. And then I know the abundance, and by far, it's kind of cool, right? This is actually the by far the most abundant isotope. Uh, 0 0.9960. Don't forget to write down that zero because it's after the decimal, so that's really important. So now you just solve this, right? This is a known quantity. That's a constant, right? You can you can actually calculate that as a number. That number is some you know number you can calculate, and then you just have your variable x times this value here. You can take uh, this quantity, you know, subtract both of these, divide by this number, and you get x. And in this case, I get x equals uh, 40.0 AMU after I round it and that's because uh, I believe we're limited to the three sig figs here and so make sure you're paying attention to those rules really important so there we go okay the last one I said was a little bit challenging and that's because I you know I want to make you think you know this is maybe a question that's a little bit more involved in something you might see on an exam but you know what on your homework you've got time to think about things you've got time to um, you know, go visit the QSC or talk to the QSC guys. And then also you can ask me questions or you can even look on the internet, right? And so um, I hope you are doing that. I hope you're not just trying to copy from a buddy because your buddy's not going to be able to help you on an exam. When it's exam time, it's all you. You can't gravy train off someone to get the answers. And so you really need to practice on your own and really try to do this to build your confidence. Okay. So this one, what do we got? We've got silver which is a really cool element. It has two isotopes. You've got silver 107 and silver 109, and the masses are both given to you, right? You've got two different uh, isotopes here. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of circle those data points. Now, you don't have to do this, but I like to try to organize things when I am reading a problem. Um, if the average atomic mass, right, here's the average atomic mass of silver. And so in this case, we know the isotope masses, we know the average atomic mass, but we do not know 
the abundance. So it says calculate the abundance of what? Both? That's crazy. In the case before it, at least I gave you two of the other ones and you only had to calculate one, but in this case I didn't give you any. And so the key insight here is that you really need to remember that if there are only two, right, if there are only two stable isotopes, that means that the uh, percent, right, of the abundance of silver uh, 107 plus the percent of silver, um, what is that, 109, they have to both add up to what? They have to add up to 100%. That's really important. If you think about it, right, we can take it as the fraction, right? We can say the fraction or the percent or the, not the percent, but the um, proportion or the fraction of silver uh, 107, right, plus the fraction or the proportion of silver 109 has to equal 1 which is really important so that's that's a really key equation here and I think that's that's worth pointing out right okay the other equation is the one we've been talking about all, all before so the atomic average atomic mass right I've given to you it's 107.87 I'll go ahead and label this as the average atomic mass right and then let's not forget our units really important and that's going to equal what it's going to equal the mass of silver 107 which is 106.90 amu and in this case well we don't know what it is so i'm just going to call this i don't know i'm just going to call this x right what does this x really mean well it means this value right here the uh percent or not the percent but the fraction of of silver 107 of, of the whole okay so then that's going to be added to the mass of the silver 109 which is 108.90 amu right and in this case well you might want to call this y right you can say this is a second variable y but the problem is we only have one equation here so we need one equation one unknown so we can use this systems of equation to kind of give us a variable in terms of the first one and so this is like a high school algebra problem right here we can say this value here is equal to what? Well, we know it's equal to 1 minus this one, so we can say it's 1 minus x, right? That's pretty easy. So now we've got one equation, one unknown, and you can solve it. It's pretty easy. It's a little bit more difficult than the problems ahead of it, but you know what? You can solve it. No big deal. And when you do all this, I'm not going to treat you like little kids. You can solve a simple algebraic equation. If not, come ask and get some help. I get 0.515 which translates to what? That translates to 51. If we multiply that by 100, right? 100%, that equals 51.5, which means that um, the x, right? Or sorry, 1 minus x is equal to what? 0 0.485, and we can multiply that by 100%, and we get 48.5%. And then this one was for what? Make sure you go back and answer the question. This is for silver 107, and this one is for silver 109. And so this is really important. Circular, circle your final answer. Make sure you got the units. And there you go. Bada bing, bada boom. You got it. And so this one's a little bit more challenging, but I think you got it. Um, you know, if you have questions, let me know. But I hope this has helped. Um, and again, you know, make sure you're, you're building your confidence in solving these kinds of problems and showing calculations. I will give you my word as a teacher. If you do not show your work, you will be very, very sad when exam comes, exam time comes, because you got to show your work. You got to show me where your answer came from. The answer alone is going to be worth very little credit. So you got to show your work. Like I said, it's really important because you know the other thing is if you get the answer wrong, but you got all your work there. Or if you didn't have time to get a final answer, you still got some work, you're going to get a lot more partial credit, which is always a good thing. So again, make sure you're showing your numbers, showing your calculations, and also showing your sig figs, showing your units, all very, very important for this class. I can't emphasize that enough. So I hope this has helped. If you have other questions, let me know. And until then, I will see you in class.